All right, 22 minutes before the top of the hour, we're here on Morning Live. So the resignation of Johannesburg Mayor Herman Mashaba has dominated headlines since his announcement yesterday. It follows the election of former Democratic Alliance leader Helen Zilla as the party's federal council chairperson. Mashaba had threatened to resign if what he called right-wing elements resurfaced in the party. To help us analyze this, uh, let's chat to political analyst Professor Stephen Friedman. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Leah. So what did you make of Herman Mashaba's resignation yesterday? Well, I think there are two aspects to it. The one is the very local aspect. I mean, the reason he's resigning is quite clearly because he believes, and he said that himself at the press conference, uh, he believes that uh, he's not going to... He wouldn't have been able to be mayor of Joburg for very much longer. That was his reading of the situation, uh, either because uh, the uh, uh, Helen Zilla group, if one, we want to call them that, didn't want the arrangement with the EFF to continue. And without the arrangement with the EFF, then uh, you know, he couldn't have remained mayor, uh, or because they started pushing the same pressure on him as they have on, on some other black leadership figures. So it was very related to the Joburg issue. But the bigger picture, of course, is... Uh, I mean, just to illustrate, if you have the leader of the party attending the media conference of the person who's resigning, the person who's resigning says, this is a racist party, the leader then grabs his hand and says, you're my friend and my hero, then the leader says something very important. The leader's clearly say, you're right, this is a racist party. Uh, so if the leader of the party says that, then you're dealing with a very serious crisis within the media. This is a mess. <laughs> well, it is a Do mess. Do you think this is as big as a mess as I think it is? No, it is. But you see, Leanne, the problem is that it's been a mess for a long time. And the mess was covered up by the fact that, uh, you know, when Jacob Zuma was president, everybody uh, aligned against Jacob Zuma. And if you were against Jacob Zuma, people didn't ask too many questions. You know, the problem is that under Helen Zilla, they recruited black members. They actively went out to recruit black members. And they simply assumed that you could take a party which had always been for white folks in the suburbs and you could bring in black members and you'd have to change the party. Uh, and that's clearly not a very realistic situation. So the black members feel that this is still somebody else's party, uh, and that's been there for a long time. Of course, what's happening now is that they're losing ground in, in, in elections, badly losing ground in by-elections, and then those old tensions come out. Yeah. Uh, that they've been there all along. What did you make of what Herman Mashaba was saying yesterday? Because he said a lot, and he was you know, very vocal about the party and what he sees were the major faults within the DA, giving us a, a glimpse many people had suspected is happening, but he was very vocal about it. Well, you see, as I said earlier, I mean, Mr. Mashaba is particularly exercised about the fact that he, in effect, made a deal uh, with the EFF, formed a working relationship with the EFF, uh, which enabled uh, the DA to govern Johannesburg. And he's saying to the... To, to, what he sees as the white leadership of the DA, you never supported me in this, you undermined me, you complained about what I did, uh, and, and now you say, you know, you, you, you want the relationship with the EFF to end. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is that Mr. Mashaba is, is quite a conservative person. I mean, he was chairman of the Free Market Foundation. Uh, he has very negative views on foreign nationals, etc. So you really have to ask yourself to a certain extent, uh, if a fairly conservative black leader can't feel at home in the DA, uh, then is it, is it really uh, realistic to expect other black leadership figures to feel uh, at home? So it's really, what he was saying is really, if you like, a diagnosis uh, of the central problem in the DA at the moment. So let's talk about what's going to happen now and also some of the reactions that have been coming through. The EFF expressing disappointment. They were uh, or are still uh, a great supporter of Herman Mashaba and how he, he did run the city, uh, especially with his coalition agreement. What's going to happen with that relationship going forward? Well, first of all, the relationship between Mr. Mashaba and the EFF could well end. I mean, I'm not pretty, you know, it's, it's not a done deal, but it could well end with him joining the EFF. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if that happened, because uh, they really seem to get on. You may remember uh, not that long ago, there was this kind of mock ceremony in which they handed in an EFF. F F t shirt etc uh, the more important question I think is is, is what is going to happen in Joburg uh, the first point to make is uh, that the EFF and the ANC are now obviously talking to each other. Uh, you know, the DA is 
is in a position where it's in the minority in Joburg, it can't just produce a mayoral candidate of its own cho choosing and swear that person in. Because if the EFF doesn't like that person, then the ANC doesn't have the votes to swear. Uh, the you know, DA, sorry, doesn't have the votes to swear it in. So you have talks going on. You could even have a situation uh, in which the, the, the city changes hands. Even if that doesn't happen, uh, the leadership of the DA is going to have to ask themselves a question. Uh, there have been complaints about the relationship with the EFF. If there's no relationship between the DA and the EFF, there's no DA government in Johannesburg or Tswani. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very volatile time, and we could well end the situation with new leadership in Joburg. If we don't, it's obviously a different situation in which that harmonious relationship between the DA and the EFF has collapsed and we don't know what's going to come out of that. And the bigger picture of all of this is that the residents of Johannesburg are the ones that at the end of the day are feeling that they're going to suffer because now what happens, you've had a lot of people speaking on social media and I was reading so many positive comments saying that within his time as the mayor, uh, Herman Mashaba did more for the city than anybody else has managed to actually achieve. That's just words yes. from some of the people saying and now with all of this uncertainty he's agreed to stay on until November which I think goes very mm. much so against what the DA policy states you resign you leave but he's managing mm. to stay on until the end of November then what then what are we going to do as Joburg residents with as you've explained it's not as clear cut as just putting another mayor in this has to be voted and vetted through it's going to be a big issue for us. Look, I, I'm a bit puzzled in a sense by this sort of viv vision of the last three years in Joburg as the golden age. Uh, simply not as a political analyst, as a resident of Joburg, I can't say I've noticed a huge difference between the last three years and the previous three years. Uh, but there is that hype out there. What we don't know, of course, is how deep-rooted that hype is. Because the fact that a few people say something on social media <coughs> doesn't mean that that's what the average Joburg resident feels. What I think is concerning, and should be concerning to all of us, uh, is that what is going to happen in Joburg is going to, in all probability, happen without any serious contribution from the residents of Joburg. So the political parties are getting together, making their deals, however that pans out. Uh, the one group of people whose opinion on this has not been asked in any way are the citizens of Joburg. Uh, but the problem the parties have is that the citizens of Joburg have a way of expressing themselves uh, through the ballot box, through by-elections now and in a local election in 2021. Uh, and if they don't get the, if the parties do not do what citizens want them to do, uh, then as we've seen in the last few weeks, they're going to get very heavily punished at the polls. So let's bring Helen Ziller into all of this now. And she stated yesterday that she was very disappointed that Mashaba did not consult with her. Uh, she went on to say that she's the same Helen Ziller that she was when she um, was pretty much so, you know, uh, bringing Herman Mashaba into the fold. So what happened there? Yeah, but you see, the problem, Deanne, is, you know, the, the messages you send, I brought him into the fold, you know, <coughs> he joined the party, for heaven's sake. Uh, if you're in the party, you clearly wanted him to join the party. I brought him in implies, you know, that he's not an individual which deserves respect on his own. He's my sort of product. And with respect, that's Helen Zilla's problem. Because the public image is Lindiwe Maziboko, Musi Maimani, Herman Mashaba, uh, is that, you know, she always falls out with black leaders. leaders. Uh, uh, Patricia DeLille is another example. And, of course, the suggestion, the, the public image which she has to live down, is that she falls out with them because she feels that she's in charge <coughs> and that they ought to respect that. Uh, so in a sense, the fact that she says this uh, is not the issue. What she should be saying and what she should be doing is trying to convince people uh, that the DA is a place for black leaders who want to lead and that she will respect that. Uh, she sort of grudgingly said that about Musi Maimani, but I think she needs to do a lot more to indicate uh, that black people feel at home in the DA. Yeah, and, and, and this is which culminates in this big question. We had a, a, we've been talking about it, and everybody's been talking about it for the last two days with Helen Ziller coming in now as the federal chair. Firstly, explain to us, because I've had a lot of people asking me this as well, and then we heard uh, Helen Ziller explaining it yesterday that she's there to clean the toilet, uh, as in my money. Did you hear her say that comment? Right. So my money's the leader, but she's just going to clean the toilet. And she's very much so downplaying this role. Says so she's still going to be knitting. She's going to be behind the scenes. She's going to stay in her lane. Even when she wasn't active and didn't have a major role mm. like this, she never stayed in her lane. How is she now going to stay in her lane? And what is the real role 
of the federal chairperson? Yeah, that's a very good question because it doesn't really matter if she's out there being public. The previous uh, federal chairperson was James Self, yes. who held the position for a very long time. James Self is not a very upfront public figure. Yes, he was interviewed a lot of the time, but he wasn't the kind of person who attracted a lot of attention to himself. However, everybody knew that James Self was a major power within the DA. I mean, it, this federal chair post is pretty much the DA's equivalent of the ANC Secretary General post. Uh, and therefore, whoever occupies the post uh, is really the person who is in, in, in charge of keeping the party together. Uh, and there's no way <coughs> in which anybody who occupies that position, least of all a Helen Ziller, is simply going to be a cleaner of toilets. Whether she's up front publicly or not, she is going to be the administrative hub of the party. Uh, and that, of course, is in itself a problem because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not only the racial dynamic within the, the DA. The message the DA has been sending out over the last while or so is all the new leadership are now good. We need to bring the, the, the old leadership back. It's not only Helen Ziller. The committee which dealt with the whole question of election yes. reverses. Tony Leon. Ryan Kutzia, who was Tony Leon's strategist. So the message going out is new leadership, you failed. We need need the old folks back in to tell you how to do things. And that can't be healthy for a party because then you're telling people that you're not generating uh, new and competent leadership. Yeah. So I think you know, without the racial dynamic, this kind of resurrection of the old DA people really sends a very uncomfortable message. Well, it certainly does, and it's also not good for the country because you know, we are a, a country, a dynamic country that's moving forward and politically savvy at this point in time and people are seeing right through this. Um, I want to touch on that commission, that report, because this is now bringing into question the leadership of Musi Maimani because this report obviously looked into what went wrong, why they're losing support and as you say, uh, Ryan Kutia, Tony Leon and Michelle LaRue are the three that were in this, so the old guard researching. Mm. Some of the findings, I mean, they were uh, blaming it on many, many things. They also spoke to uh, my money's relationship with Jane Self and John Steenhuisen being dysfunctional. They also said in this they had interviewed 200 different party members and they came to the conclusion that although Musi Maimani is immensely talented, uh, most say he's indecisive, he's inconsistent and he's conflict averse and they've recommended uh, that uh, uh, my money amongst others, step down. Uh, James Self and Paul Bogie, who have now gone, but my money is still the one hanging on. I mean, this is a clear sign from the party to say, you've got to go. Well, it's not a clear sign from the party okay. to say Talk to us go. about this. It's a clear sign from three members of the party to say you've got to go. Is and that not a majority, though? I mean, is that not a lot? I'm not saying three people, but just having a look and saying that they have spoken to, you know, a lot of the people, they've done this report, and this is a, a big sentiment and perhaps a big divide within the party. Well, you know, they say they've spoken to 200 people. We don't know which 200 people, and we don't know how, you know, they might have all have been from the one faction rather than yeah, the other. Yeah, fair one. enough. And look, the, the evidence here is quite interesting. Okay, I mean, the first point is, uh, if they were that represent, you know, if they really represented the overwhelming will of the party, Musi Maimani would not be the leader anymore because uh, the weekend meeting would have fired him. Uh, <coughs> more interestingly, or perhaps more precisely, if you have a look at the voting figures which were leaked about the election, what you see there is that if you add together the votes for Ethel Trollope and, Mike, uh, and, and sorry, Thomas Walters, uh, who were really both on the same side of the fence, and you compare it to the votes to Helen Ziller, then essentially uh, the people who voted for Ziller got 67, the people who voted for Walters and Trollope got 69. So, in effect, that means they're split right down the middle. Mm. And I think that's the reality in the DA at the moment. Now, of course, what the DA old guard know is that if you actually go to the membership and the branches, etc., if you look at the last DA conference, if the old guard run against the new guard, the old guard always wins because they've still got that support within the branch. So if it goes to an elected conference next year, then I think my, 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 you know, my money is finished. But at the moment, what we're seeing is a party leadership split down the middle because, of course, the two... And Trollope was uh, on 
SABC radio yesterday saying this, saying, look, my understanding of what the DA should be about and Helen Ziller's understanding are totally different. I think it's a party for all South Africans. She thinks it's a party for the people who it used to be a party for in the past. And that division is almost a 50-50 division in the leadership of the DA. The EFF and the ANC must be looking on smiling. And in fact, the Freedom <laughs> Front Plus must also be looking on because they keep referring to how the Freedom Front Plus gained a lot of their support because they lost a lot. Uh, the DA are the official opposition party here in South Africa. I mean, this is the reality of who this party is. And, of course, you know, this is a, a big moment for the EFF and the ANC. I mean, what do you think is going through their minds as they sit back and watch on? Well, look, first of all, as you, you correct, I mean, it, you know, in, in percentage terms, the big winners, the FF+. Plus. Uh, <clears throat> but, of course, the FF+, Plus has a huge ceiling. I mean, to be blunt, the FF+, FF Plus... Uh, six votes among white Afrikaans speaking voters. So you, you're never talking about more, even if they, all of those voters were to vote for them, which is highly unlikely. You're not talking about more than, than six or seven percent of the electorate. Uh, on the other hand, uh, yes, it does make life a lot easier. The ANC has been gaining seats from, from the DA since, since May. Uh, I'm not sure where it places the EFF. It's very good for the ANC. Uh, but the EFF, for example, it's had a very cozy relationship with Herman Mashaba. Will it have the same relationship with either the ANC or the DA? Uh, and so, uh, in a sense, the big winners from this at the moment, and that's reflected in the by-elections, are the FF Plus uh, and the ANC. But I think we need to go a little bit beyond that. Um, a lot of people, and one understands that, a lot of people are distressed by what's happening in the DA because they say we need a strong opposition. And that is absolutely true. Uh, you can't have an effective democratic system unless you have a strong opposition. I think the question that's going to be asked now is, is this the opposition, the strong opposition we wanted? You are, after all, dealing with a party which announced, I think, 10 years ago that its target was 30% of the vote. It's still hovering in the 20s. Yeah. Uh, it's really a party which has built its reputation on speaking for a minority. So if you've built your reputation on speaking for a minority, it's a bit more difficult to speak for the majority. So I think it's going to raise questions. We're already in a situation, I mean, I've been writing for a while now that we have a huge hole in our politics in the sense that there are very many South African voters who feel that they vote for the party that's doing the least damage rather than the party who they think really speaks for them. And perhaps the plus for South African voters is that this turmoil in the DA may bring forward the day when we have new alignments and new parties which opposition voters feel much more comfortable with. Yeah, so opening up that political landscape. Yes. Two quick fire questions. Herman Mashaba's future, where do you see him going? I know you alluded to him perhaps moving, maybe not so much to the ANC, but certainly to the EFF, or maybe he leaves politics altogether. He's a wealthy businessman. Does he really need this in his life? He doesn't necessarily. I mean, as you say, he's very well off. I mean, he can go and run more businesses or run charitable foundations or whatever it is he wants to do. If he stays in politics, I mean, it seems... The likeliest path seems to be the EFF. Uh, you know, he's, he's made it clear that he thinks the ANC are a disaster. He would look ridiculous if he went to the ANC. Uh, and, and I presume that he realises that, uh, you know, the record over the last few years of starting small parties, etc., doesn't uh, really get you very far. So I think if he's staying in politics, uh, the smart money suggests that he's staying as an EFF member rather than as some kind of small party yeah. representative. And then finally, um, do you think that ANC are going to snatch Joburg back? Uh, well, I think that the, if you've been looking at the results, it's just a matter of time. I mean, they're either going to do it in 2021 or they're going to do it now. Um, I think that very much depends on a whole lot of backroom negotiating. Uh, I mean, all sorts of deals are made. You know, we, we talk about all the high-flown stuff about policy, etc. A lot of this has got to do with who's on tender committees, uh, on who's benefiting, and some of that has been reported in the media. So there's going to be a lot of backroom dealing, and I don't think the political parties themselves right now know who's going to be running Johannesburg in, in a month's time, let alone the rest of us. That leaves me scared. Thank you for talking to us, Stephen Friedman. All right, political analyst Professor Stephen Friedman helping us analyze the city of Johannesburg Mayor Herman Mashaba's resignation, as well as a lot more issues pertaining to, of course, the city itself and the, uh, the running and management thereof and the DA itself. Let's take a break. We'll have the news at 7 for you after this.